Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, the city approves a contract to ensure the skies light up come Independence Day. Then kids compete for cash prizes at a local bike rodeo. Plus, the craft brew scene continues to grow in Torrance. And a local organization works to eliminate food waste. We'll tell you how. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. everyone and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Rhiannon Tertanich filling in for Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Tax day has come and gone and if you haven't met the deadline yet, the Internal Revenue Service says there's still a few things you can do. The IRS suggests if you owe taxes, file as soon as you can even though it's late. This will help minimize the interest and penalty charges. If you can show a reasonable cause for being late, the IRS will consider a reduction in penalties. Now, if you are due a refund, there is no penalty for filing a late return. And if you need more time to pay your taxes, you can apply for a payment plan with the IRS. For those who did file an extension, be sure to mark October 17th as the final deadline to file your, file your individual tax returns to cover 2015. According to the IRS, they anticipate issuing 90% of refunds in less than 21 days and expects more than 70% of taxpayers to receive tax refunds this year. You can get forms and more information on irs.gov. Construction of the Torrance Transit Center officially kicked off recently. The long-awaited phase one of the city's transit park and ride regional terminal construction includes rough grading and storm drain construction. The city first broke ground in September 2015, nearly a decade after the transit center closed at Delamo Fashion Center. The transit terminal plans to create a strategically located multi-model facility to better meet the needs of South Bay commuters. This will not only reduce single occupancy vehicle trips thanks to its close proximity to the 405 and 110 freeways, but it will also provide more routes with other regional providers that will use a transit terminal. You can log on to the city's website and click on Public Works to check out the latest time-lapse recording of all that's going on at the construction site. That's torrentca.gov. A new business is moving into the former Panasonic site in Torrance. Marshall Electronics, based in El Segundo, will make their move to Torrance this summer. Scheduled to move in as early as June for almost 30 years, Marshall Electronics has specialized in the development, manufacturing, and distribution of leading-edge technology products for a wide range of professional audio-video applications. A privately owned American company with four operating units Broadcast multimedia, optical systems, professional audio, and lastly, their cable and connector division. They operate manufacturing facilities in the U.S., China, Japan, Korea, and Russia. Panasonic's manufacturing plant in Torrance closed its doors a year ago. After 57 years in business, a national sporting goods store is quickly making plans to close their doors. Sport Chalet, which started in the late 50s as a small family-owned ski shop, is saying goodbye for good. Their online business already closed and plans to shut down operations at all 47 locations by the end of the month. Driving by the Torrance store, you'll notice going out of business and everything must go signs. The regional chain purchased in 2014 by Connecticut company Vestas Retail Group operates 40 stores in California alone, five in Arizona, and two in Las Vegas. Sport Chalet said it would continue to honor gift cards until April 29th. Those unable to visit a store before then can transfer the gift card balance to another gift card from its sister stores, Eastern Mountain Sports or Bob stores through July 29th. Each store is also offering an additional 10% off the lowest marked price. Sport Chalet struggled financially for years, last reporting a profit back in 2007. The Torrance store is located at the Village Delamo Shopping Center at 21305 Hawthorne Boulevard. All repairs and equipment currently in the store should be picked up by April 29th. A South Bay landmark with more than 40 years of history in Torrance also announced their impending closure this week. Cook and Stuff, located on Sepulveda Boulevard near Crenshaw, will close its doors for good on June 30th. The family-owned and operated business began catering to customers in 1973, selling cookware and bakeware products. From a limited supply to now featuring more than 20,000 items, owner Stacy katz Boschk who took over the family business in 1992, expressed tremendous gratitude 
to the Torrance community for the years of memories and friendships created. It's very bittersweet that we're closing and I'm sad to announce the closing of the store. We've been here 44 years in Torrance. I love the South Bay. Uh, miss all my customers. It's just time. I plan on taking some long-awaited time off. I'm looking forward to spending time with my grandkids and my mom and my husband and um, it's going to be great. Cooking Stuff is located at 2722 Sepulveda Boulevard. Until the store closes, all items will be given a 15% off discount. They're open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. Sundays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also check out their products online at cookingstuff.com. Traffic delays continue heading northbound on Madrona Avenue. The Goldsworthy Groundwater Desalter Expansion Project, which kicked off earlier this year, will produce up to 80% of the potable water used locally in Torrance once it's complete. The project includes installing four wells over the course of the next two years. Traffic will impact Madrona Avenue going northbound between Torrance Boulevard and Spencer Avenue, with two lanes closed between 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily until the end of the month. The recent city council meeting discussed an important issue that could have big benefits for the community. Council agenda item 12 was 12G was a recommendation of the city manager asking the city council to consider developing projects that would benefit the community based on penalties imposed on ExxonMobil in the amount of two and a half million dollars. Following a public hearing hosted by the South Coast Air Quality Management District in Torrance on April 2nd, the SCAQMD discussed whether to reopen the ExxonMobil refinery, which was damaged by an explosion last year. State regulators issued 19 citations against the local refinery and proposed penalties for violating air pollution regulations. Now, while the governing board of the Air Quality Management District will have the final say of how the funds will get allocated, they plan to review all the recommendations proposed by the city, the public, and anyone interested in voicing a suggestion. The $2.5 million figure represents half the $5 million in penalties imposed on ExxonMobil by SCAQMD and allocated for projects to benefit the surrounding neighborhood and communities. ExxonMobil plans to restart the refinery in early May with notification given to the community at least 48 hours prior to the start. If you'd like to recommend a project for the AQMD to consider, you can contact them at one 800 288-7664 or email PIC request at aqmd.gov. Torrance City Council members approved a contract at the recent meeting as well, bringing the city one step closer to an amazing fireworks show come July 4th. The City Council was asked to approve a contract with Pyro Spectaculars Inc. based in Rialto, California earlier this year. Council approved a fireworks show to be held with a total budget of $75,000, with $35,000 of it set aside for the fireworks show itself. In preparation for the event, city staff prepared a survey and flyer and distributed to nearly 1,000 residents and businesses living near the Civic Center. As a result, the Community Services Department received seven completed online surveys and one phone call offering mostly positive feedback and approval of the fireworks show. The contract was approved by a 6 to 1 vote. The show is expected to fire off more than 1,000 shells, including nearly 370 just for the finale alone, promising to be an exciting show. Well, still ahead, a new website is launched to make car shopping easier in Torrance. Plus, spring allergies got you down? We've got some tips on how to keep them under control. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward-facing or rear-facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. A local event helped teach kids the importance of bike safety, all the while having a good time. 
Well, I really love riding my bike, mm-hmm. and and I really wanted to like have a competition. For the most part, it was just fun. I had lots of fun in this competition. The fun thing was that it was like just fun. <laughs> um, you go just weave through the cone, and you're not supposed to like step on the cone or stop. The George Citywide Bike Rodeo event was held at Victor Elementary School recently with top prizes including gift cards and trophies. The Torrance Council of PTAs along with the Torrance Firefighters Association and the Torrance Police Officers Association joined forces to not only enforce bicycle safety and helmet awareness but also offered helmet fittings and even free helmets thanks to David Tom, a senior consultant with Collision and Injury Dynamics who specializes in protective headgear. All 17 elementary schools in Torrance participated with more than 200 students joining in the competition. The students rode through a series of six courses, each utilizing a different element of bike control. The first and second prize winners of each grade were invited to participate in the city-wide rodeo. The important thing is that they're learning uh, bike control. It emphasizes uh, bike safety through a variety of courses. One of our firefighters comes and uh, checks the kids' bikes, makes sure all the nuts and bolts, the chain is tight. So. Really the overall thing is to emphasize bicycle safety for the kids. Just a great event, it's a good event to, um, the PTA does a really good job of organizing the individual schools and then we're uh, very happy to come out and interact with the kids. It's fun for both uh, us as the fire department and uh, the students, so it's a good time. This is an annual event held in Torrance, hosted by the PTA. Well, another tradition here in Torrance is the annual Bunkasai Festival. Hosted by the Torrance Sister City Association, this event is a Japanese cultural festival which raises funds to support the cultural exchange program. Live performances, a variety of food vendors, activities, and crafts all were part of the festivities held at the Ken Miller Recreation Center. This year marked the 44th year the event has taken place. This year includes demonstrations of Japanese dance, kodo, and shakuhachi music along with traditional vocal music, taiko drums, shoto calligraphy, and origami. Colorful Okinawa taiko and dance exhibits were also featured along with martial arts performances such as kendo, judo, and aikido. This is not only a fun but educational event for the community. While the event was free, food and treats were available for purchase which was more popular than ever before. There was also a record number of vendors who participated with a total of 21. This was a successful two-day event which occurs every spring. For more information you can go to torrentsistercity.org. Three local businesses were the beneficiaries of the California Competes Tax Program. California's Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development recently announced that the California Competes Tax Credit, or CCTCs, committee approved $70 million in tax credits for 103 companies expanding and creating jobs in California with three from Torrance. The awards will help these companies create a projected 9,369 jobs and generate more than $1.3 billion in investments across California. Locally, L3 Communications received $1 million, Physical Optics Corporation received $210,000, and JC Accountancy received $90,000. These incentives are slated to help with $30 million in investments and 165 new jobs to be created in Torrance alone. California Competes Tax Credit was created by Governor Brown and is focusing on helping businesses grow and stay in California. Torrance's newest craft brewery officially opened their doors and Common Sense producer and host Laura Fong was there for their grand opening and has more on the impact in the community. Such a relief to finally um, see our dream come to fruition. Allison and Jason Kolb, along with friends and now business partners, Patrick and Mandy Schultz, were thrilled to finally see their dreams come to life. We've been friends for about eight years now, and when we decided to start a brewery, it just kind of came up, you know, shoaled, and it was sold. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce, city staff, and elected officials all came out to celebrate the official grand opening of Shoal Premium Ales. We're a family-run business, a really fun environment. It's a great place to meet friends. Allison Kolb is the president and CEO of Shoal, the eighth brewery to pour into Torrance. 
The brewery and tasting room is tucked away in Industrial Park off Columbia Street near Maple Avenue. I love to meet all the people of our community and I love it when people come in and I know their name. Uh, we're a fun group of people that are just trying to make good beer and have um, a good time. While it's too soon to call it the signature beer, it looks like the Dad's IPA is the front runner. There's a, also a beer for everybody. Patrick Schultz is the head brewer at Schulb, and he is bringing a new mashup to the South Bay, which was named America's newest craft beer capital by LA Magazine. One of the things that makes my beers unique, I feel like, is um, very IPA-centric, lots of hoppy beers, but uh, my beers have a very strong malt backbone to them. So it's almost like a, a Midwest, East Coast brewing style meets West Coast. With their unique line of beers, Schulb hopes to ferment their craft ales and torrents for years to come. I'm mostly looking forward to creating new recipes and making good, good, fresh, clean beer. We have big plans for our brands and we're looking forward to not only just sharing Schulb with the city of Torrance and the South Bay, but with other parts of our great state as well and beyond. Enjoy a pint or a flight. Either way, Schulb is now brewing and open for business. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Laura Fong. Thanks, Laura. Schulb's Tasting Room is open Thursdays and Fridays from 4 to 9 p.m., Saturdays 1 to 9 p.m., and Sundays noon to 6 p.m. You can follow their journey on their website, drinkschulb.com. Torrance car dealerships have united to form the Torrance Auto Dealers Association and recently launched their new website. TADA is made up of 20 dealerships in Torrance and 27 brands offering the largest selection in the area of premium, new, certified, pre-owned, and used cars to choose from. While a majority of the dealerships are located along Pacific Coast Highway in Torrance, now you can go online and search more than 4,000 vehicles, making shopping for cars that much easier. You can go to their website at TorrenceAutodealers.com for more information. The Torrance Fire Department is recruiting again for their Fire Auxiliary Program. This unique program provides the Torrance Fire Academy graduates an opportunity to apply their acquired skills and gain insight while preparing for a fire service career. The Auxiliary Firefighter position is a one-year volunteer commitment. Candidates would work one 24-hour shift per week responding to emergencies, assisting with fire prevention inspections and maintaining of fire apparatus and equipment as well as the fire station. To be considered, applications must be 18 years old, have graduated from a state-recognized fire academy, have a current EMT certificate with Los Angeles scope of practice, and have a valid California driver's license. You can go to the city's website, torrentca.gov, and go to the fire department's page to get more information. Spring season is here, and with that brings spring allergies. I got a chance to speak with a local doctor to find out the best ways to combat those pesky symptoms. Gary Kiros knows all too well the signs and symptoms of allergies, especially now that the spring season is in full swing. I was having a little pressure and it sounded a little muffled, but mm -hmm. um, now that the congestion has gone away, it's gone a lot better. Experts say the leading cause of spring allergies is pollen, and this year expect it to be worse than usual. This year, fortunately for the drought situation, we've had more rain, but that also means the plants will grow more and will get more pollen with the season. So usually the springtime pollens from trees, from grasses, will, will tend to be much higher. Allergy specialist Dr. Joy Shuttler says it's common for patients like Kiros to mistake allergy symptoms for a cold. In general, allergies are going to involve some sort of itching. So itchy eyes, itchy throat, nose, sneezing a lot. And that allergy itching tends to occur even more as the days become longer. So daylight savings time affects allergies only in that we get so much more after work time and people can go outdoors after work, they come home, got lots of, lots of time to go hiking, take the dog for a walk. Shuttler says the first sign of allergies can happen at any age. So reducing your exposure to the things that trigger your allergies and treating symptoms correctly can be a big help in the long run. Keeping pollens outdoors and not allowing them to contaminate the bedroom is is key. Air filters are very good for that as well. If avoiding common allergens is not reducing symptoms, you may want to find out exactly what you are allergic to. 
then really it's time to go look for what are the true causes of your own specific allergies, which we can accomplish with about a 20 minute test, the, a simple skin test. And then um, we can focus more on exactly what your specific tar targets should be. There are a number of medications and nasal sprays to treat symptoms, as well as another option. Allergy shots or immunotherapy actually build a tolerance. So it's in the long run so much better than just suppressing your symptoms with medication. While allergy medications can provide relief, Shuttler says there are some remedies already in your cabinet at home. Simple salt water rinse, sinus rinse. Um, there are various forms that comes in. Uh, neti pot is something that a lot of people are familiar with. And with all of the options out there, patients like Kiros will be able to find something that works for them. If anything that helps me to keep my dog, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, I'm ready to try that. Dr. Shuttler offered some great tips. She also reminded me that while there are medications and holistic approaches you can take, the key really is to find out what your specific allergies are so that you know what's triggering those symptoms. Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center is working with an organization called Food Finders, Inc., to make sure none of the food at the hospital goes to waste. Jesse Pierre has more. Besides overseeing the day-to-day -day food and nutrition operations at Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center, Director Tom Harney has his hands full with a new program. Now, it's a partnership uh, between Little Company of Mary and Food Finders, wow. and it's a community project to donate our surplus food back to the community in which we live. For over six weeks now, Harney and his staff have donated all of their excess food to those in need. There's such a need, a, a need, and you know we're a faith-based organization, and mm -hmm. and to care for the poor and vulnerable is is our mission, mm -hmm. and this you know ties right into it, and so it just sort of like started, and then you know. Uh, all the food service workers have now um, become food finders. It feels good, but it feels a lot better to have all these people behind me uh, caring for all the people. Our GM, our retail manager, everybody involved in the program. Each staff member is doing their part to make sure that the extra food is stored properly. In all capacities, whether it's in the cafeteria or in catering or uh, the gentleman that stocks the floors, um, wherever we have surplus food, um, they all take it um, and uh, on a daily basis mm -hmm. and we put it in a certain area in the kitchen and we label it for food finders. And three days a week, a local organization like Bridges to Home comes and picks it up. Well, Bridges to Home is an organization that services the needs of those who suffer with developmental disabilities uh, as well as troubled youth. Uh, Receiving all of this food is one of the many highlights for the residents and staff. Oh, the food from the hospital, I've been enjoying it a lot. I, I actually love it more than the food that gets made up in this house. That's awesome. They are completely impacted. Uh, they look forward to it. Uh, they consistently let me know, Drew, we love the food. It's great. Although it has only been a few weeks, Harney says he is glad to be part of such a wonderful program. Is, is such a calling and to, to uh, um, you know, all of us here as caregivers want to um, benefit the community and that's, you know, what the, the sisters started and so to be able to bring a program full circle um, in the community and have a staff that supports me so and, and uh, it's just, it's overwhelming. It's really Harney hopes to see the Food Finders program grow at the hospital, donate to more facilities, and continue to work towards limiting the amount of food that goes to waste. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Jesse Pierre. Thanks, Jesse. Food Finders was founded in 1989, and since then, more than 270 agencies have partnered together in an effort to help eliminate food waste. A new research center will begin to figure out health disparities among the underserved ethnic and racial groups in the U.S., thanks to a multi-million dollar grant awarded to a university here in California. The Stanford Precision Health for Ethnic and Racial Equity Center, known as Sphere Center, will receive a five-year, $11.5 million grant from the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities at the National Institute of Health in the hopes of closing the gap. This is one of the first programs funded under President Obama's Precision Medicine Initiative, which hopes to gain better insight into biological, environmental, and behavioral in influences on diseases in the U.S. Well, still ahead, upcoming events you won't want to miss. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. 
Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back, everybody. Here are some events happening around town. The Torrance Roosevelt Association is hosting another fundraiser at Lazy Dog Restaurant and Bar. If you go on their website and print out a flyer, bring it, on, uh, bring it in on Thursday, April 28th, and 15% of your bill will go to the TRFA. Then if you're looking to give back to the community, join in on ShareFast Volunteer Day on Saturday, April 30th. A number of events will take place in Torrance. You can go to sharefastinc.org slash projects. And on Sunday, May 1st, Bob Dylan fans will be treated to an annual event at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center from 12 to 8 p.m. There will be music played throughout the day. For more information or tickets, go to andyandrenee.com. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Rhiannon Tertanich, filling in for Jin Chun. If you miss any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.